The Investigator's Toolbox is here. Are you a licensed investigator, an investigative or security professional? How would you like to gain work-based skills, be more productive, and grow your business? Well, welcome to the TheInvestigatorsToolbox.com. Check out this industry-changing website that's pioneering into the future today. You can network with other investigators in our forums. You can take a webinar, check out a blog or read an article to brush up on your skills. You can visit our vast resource catalog of research websites and bookmark them in your own private library. Everybody's talking about the Investigator's Toolbox. This really is the future of networking, learning, and resource management. Check this out. For a limited time, we're offering a legacy discount for new members. If you sign up early, we'll save you 25%. Take advantage of exclusive discounts from site partners like Crosstracks, Delfpoint, PI Magazine, Hetherington Group, Scope Now, Paraben, and so many more. Just visit the website investigators-toolbox.com and check out the demo video in the Who We Are section. Can you afford 41 cents a day? If the answer is yes, then don't delay. Join the community. Investigatorstoolbox.com. These discounts won't last. That's www.investigators-toolbox.com. Welcome to this week's show. Matt reaches into his old bag of tricks to bring in his old friend, Richard Harris Eisen. Matt and Rich have been doing business together for about 13 years. Rich's company, Nicoletti & Harris, handles all of Matt's process serving work. The guys discuss how a good relationship between process server and investigator can translate to bigger business for both sides. Now, please welcome Richard Harris Eisen and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. This is your host, Matt Spare. Uh, today, I reached into my bag of tricks and uh, reached out to a real old friend of mine, Richard Harris Eisen, he owns Nicoletti and Harris. He's a co-owner. They're a process serving company. And today I wanted to discuss what that looks like, a private investigator doing work with a process serving company or that symbiotic relationship. So, uh, Rich, I want to welcome you to the program. How are you? Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. All good. I look forward to discussing this. And uh, hello, everybody. Yeah. So you're a, uh, a Florida and New York guy. You've been going back and forth. And we were yes. talking about some of the challenges that you, you've had with traveling in quarantine, right? Yeah, I guess that uh, things changed about six months ago with respect to uh, going back and forth. But I'm sure that'll uh, settle down hopefully in the next couple of weeks. With the pandemic and everything, everybody's been working remotely. We do have people working in the office. We have, uh, I guess, essentials in the office. Right. We're getting by, making do. We've been very busy, believe it or not. Right. All good. And uh, just you know, trying to, trying to navigate through, of course, I guess, living in Miami and going back and forth. Uh, I had a residence in New York, and I always stayed there, but the challenge is a traveling are a little, you know, I guess tricky these days. Right. A little unknown fact that we can throw out there is uh, you turned me on to driving Priuses. Uh, I remember By having way, a meeting with you. You and a few other people out there. And I'm just like, yes. look at this guy. He's so funny. He, he basically went from an Escalade down to a Prius. Like, what's up yes. with that dude? And you're, a great you're, story. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you were like, no, you got to do it. And I got to say, I drive a Prius plug-in now. I took it even one step further. So kudos to you, man. But you know what? I used to uh, live on Long Island and I would uh, drive on the expressway every day, back and forth, going home. And I would see these Toyotas go flying by me, flying mm -hmm. by me. And I, I just didn't understand why. And then I realized that the Prius was able to be driving in the HOV lane. So that was it. I just drove into the uh, Toyota deal and I, uh, I got one. Great I, car, and I remember. Uh, I'm glad you uh, you're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I was like, man, this guy he used to have an Escalade. Like, <laughs> like he was uh, <laughs> he no, no, really no. downsized, man. <laughs> I would take the Prius any day over the Escalade. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. So you've you've made me a believer. Uh, one of these days, I'm I'm gonna uh, upgrade though. I'm definitely gonna go to the I Pace, but uh, I'm not quite there yet. I haven't earned it. I, I have faith in you. How's everything else? How's business? I, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Everything's everything's good. We're plugging away. And so let's turn it back to the process serving a little bit. Because to me, okay. like during the, the pandemic and the shutdown and it's essential, essential services, like it was questionable as to whether or not you could actually serve. I remember you and I having conversations during that time and just the challenges of, yes, people are home, but they're not going to open the door, obviously. So tell me a little bit, like what what was that like in the, in the last uh, six months or so? Actually, trying to serve process on people. Great question. Uh, well, first we had to make sure that we were essential. It turned out that we were. It's very tricky uh, with with respect to the pandemic, serving an individual. Very tricky 
because most businesses are closed. Right. So in the beginning, it was more or less non-existent for the first two months. Right. Then when things started to come back, businesses started to gradually open. I think maybe people became a little bit more comfortable with, how shall I say, the normal course of life. Business started to, you know, we started to, to move process. Right. We were serving individuals. Uh, our process servers, of course, all had gloves, all had masks. I guess I respected and uh, served pursuant to the uh, CDC guidelines. We started to get busier and more process right. than I thought we ever would, probably two months into the pandemic. Yeah. And one of the other caveats, too, is that they keep extending the statute of limitations on things. Right. right? So, yeah, that being said, listen, we never have any solace with any, anything we do. And of course, you know, papers are getting filed in March. Most of the process in New York is, you know, summons and complaints, and we usually have 120 days to serve that process. Right. So, you know, from July, a lot of these cases weren't being served in, in, in the normal time frame. So then, of course, they extend the statute of limitations. Right. But we, we seem to start, we seem to really be moving cases along a lot quicker than I thought we would, serving businesses, individuals. You know, a lot of the filing we do is electronic, so there's right. no real, you know, need to go to court. So we, we've been busy. Yeah. I mean, and, and listen, the, that whole move to filing electronically you know, a couple of years ago, who would have ever thought how much of a game changer that would be? Right. You know? There's no question about that. What we did in our business, just to, uh, I guess, bring technology into it, we, we integrated and we, we more or less set up uh, API technology uh, with, our, with our clients. So we're really able to transmit documents back and forth. It's very seamless. You know, the paper does get produced. It really only gets produced by the at the point of service by the process server. Right. So a lot of our clients are still working remotely. They're filing their cases electronically, and they're just transmitting them to us. And we're you know we're able to affect service. Right. So tell me a little bit about the history of Nicoletti and Harris. Like how long have you been in business, and how did you get into that line of work? It's a good question. I had a lot of mutual relatives in the legal profession years ago. You know, I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. I even, I dabbled in the restaurant business. I went to uh, culinary school. I did go to uh, business school as well. But I, I, I initially pursued a, a career in the culinary arts. And then I kind of didn't like what I saw. So I decided to get into the process of serving business, but not really taking it as serious as I thought I was going to. Right. Uh, and once I got into it, I, I then realized that I saw a, a very lucrative business somewhat antiquated. I had a lot of, how shall I say, people in the industry that I knew. And I, it kind of just went from there. Right. We, we started to specialize in a niche, which is mass torts. Nobody was really doing that. You know, it's 25 years later and uh, we've built a great business right. and we love what we're doing. We yeah. love, we love, we love doing business with people like you as well. Yeah. Well, listen, you guys have been my, my arm <laughs> of uh, process serving. And we'll talk about that a little bit more after the break. And, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, in having, you know, the right people do a particular job and, you know, they've, they've changed rules and laws along the way. And rather than get caught up in all that, uh, you know, I made the conscious decision just looking at how much in my business model itself, you know, my operations, how much was I actually doing process serving? And, I, and it was the point where I was doing that work just to placate my clients, but I wasn't really making money on it. So, you know, it's like one of those things, I don't want to turn the work away, but I don't want to do it either. <laughs> so I, 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 like, what's the, I, I what's the solution? Yeah. You know? And then on your end, you, you had investigative work that needed to be done, but you weren't licensed. Um, Absolutely. In, in investigator. So that's, that's how that relationship started. And, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dive into more of that in, in, in a little bit, but you know, to me, what I always thought was interesting with your background is, is the fact that you, you do have all these relationships of people that you know within the industry and that's like half the battle there, right? Like getting those meetings um, to, to even do it. I, I thought it definitely give you a big advantage. I mean, you opened doors yeah, for me, definitely, I, that I can say. Listen, it's definitely, it's, it's somewhat of an advantage, nothing to take for granted. You know, the service that you stand by is obviously speaks for itself and that's the most important thing. And we take it very seriously. Right. You know, you know process serving could be somewhat a de minimis, you know, how shall I say, process in, 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 in the lights of an attorney until there's an issue and that process, somebody needs to stand by that service. Right. Right. We know how important that is. Yeah. We understand the CPLR, you know, the type of process that we're serving. So we take it very seriously. 
Yep. Relationships are, are great. They get you in the door, right. but it's the service that you provide that I feel. No, that's you know. that, that's true. And and you know, some folks might not know too much about this this side of the business or anything like that. But there used to be there was something called traverse hearings where you know they would there would be proceedings calling into question whether or not the process was actually served. And then, you know, the server would have to go to a court hearing and, and bring proof that they actually served the person that was served. It was a it was a big pain. And I think one of the things that changed that is they started sanctioning lawyers for bringing out these false traverse hearings uh, and actually right. like ten thousand dollar sanctions made it like, OK, well, maybe I'm not going to waste the court's time with with this ridiculous uh you know, uh, motion practice, which essentially what was going on. And, and I think that was a big game changer too. What type of technological, and you talked about your API and, and everything like that, but, you know, doing this in 25 years, what are some of the things you've seen uh, from when you started to what you're doing now as far as technology and the ability for the server to actually do their job? You would go out with a log book and, you know, you would obviously, you know, go up to the door, you would identify the home or you identify the business right. and you would try to make, you know, you would make process. You would write down the information in a, in a log book right. and you would submit your paperwork. Now, uh, with our, you know, handheld devices and our, and our uh, iPhones, the services is documented, interfaced to our technology in our office. It's all real time. It's much more state of the art. You okay. know, every service now has a GPS coordinated, really in the city of New York, has a GPS coordinate, uh, co a coordinated, uh, I guess, uh, point of reference to where the service is made. Because of regulations in the city, uh, it's become a lot tighter. But I, I think technology has really been a, a big part of, of the change in the industry. In a good way. And, uh, Definitely in a good way. In, 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 a, in, a very good, in a very good way, which yeah. is why we were able to operate, I think, during COVID. Yeah. I mean, like one of the game changers for me when I started uh, doing the investigative work and the process serving work was just not having to use Hagstrom maps anymore. Like having a reliable GPS system where I'm not on the east end of Long Island at nine o'clock at night with no street lights trying yeah, to figure out you I, know, I, I, where the I, house I, is I located. Forgot about, I forgot about that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the changes as well. I mean, I, I, I used to take uh, one of those Randall McNally maps, yeah. okay, and line up the grid. That was obviously a, a, a very, very, very antiquated state of, of what we used to do. Sure. Once we got GPS technology in our cars, we would be able to get to every address a lot quicker. But again, and then technology just, you know, it, it snowballed from there. So, so tell me a little bit about this mass tort thing. Like what, what is that? What does that look like as far as serving goes? The definition of mass tort is when a large, large group of people, I think, uh, get exposed to, to a specific product, you know, uh, chemical fiber uh, a drug uh, a bad drug is a mass tort right and it usually in, in in our business requires mass filings and mass service right and that's another reason why uh, our technology is very 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 desirable for our clients because it allows them to just process the work much quicker much more accurately right with, with less you know less labor yeah and uh it's, it's much tighter, that's a but game, that, game that, that's, that's what mass torts is. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very big part of, uh, the personal injury space of litigation. Yeah. You know, we've been handling these, you know, cases uh, for about 20 years. Yeah. And it's one thing after the other, you know, it's whether it's uh, mesothelioma or, you know, it's talcum easy. powder or whatever, you know, so there's something new that's coming up that, that it, people you know, are it, it really, it seems to be any special litigation is something we've been, yeah. you know, uh, doing for years as well. I mean, Surprisingly, so is also still going on, but we you know we serve these defendants all over the country. We right. serve them all over the world. Yeah, well, that was the the next point that I wanted to make actually before we jump out for a break. So your your business model and the way you run your business, you can serve anywhere within the country and anywhere around the world, essentially, right? Absolutely, we have a, a, a one of the largest network of affiliates than any process serving company in the country. We move process all day long to hundred vendors all over the country right. and uh, they could really serve at a moment's notice. Yeah. You know, they could think I can get a paper served anywhere in the country. Probably, you know, uh, could it be done in a half hour? Yes. But in an hour, it's, you know, that's, you know, that's something that we, uh, we could do all day, all day long. Sounds like a pretty hefty rush charge. <laughs> 
you know, listen, it's uh, it's definitely rush charge. There's no definitely, question about it. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> but we're we're getting charged too. Yeah, no, okay. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I we're gonna jump out and take a break real quick, and when okay. we come back in, I really want to just explore the the relationship between the private investigator and the process server, and really Absolutely. just touch on some some points of that. So everybody, sit tight, and we'll be right back. Are you using a case management system? The answer is no you should really rethink that process, right? So as you guys know, Crosstrax has been an amazing sponsor of the show. They've just been uh, really supportive. As you guys also know, I didn't used to have a case management system. I was the, the investigator that was fighting them tooth and nail. I finally decided to give it a whirl. What a great decision, right? During the COVID shutdown, I was able to actually roll my whole business into it and get completely up and running. And um, my clients love it. I mean, just today, I got a, a phone call from a client of mine who just couldn't believe how easy it was to access everything and uh, how invoices were there. He actually asked me to go back and upload all my prior cases and put it into cross tracks. I've been doing business with that firm for, I don't know, about eight years. So uh, it's a lot of cases. Yeah. If you don't use a case management system, you should, right? You should check it out. Give cross tracks a shot, contact Brad or one of the teammates over there and, uh, They'll get you up and running with a trial and see if it's for you. If you have used Crosstracks and it's been a while and uh, you're not happy with the system that you're in, go check them out. They're doing a lot of really cool new things and uh, see if it's right for you. If you're unhappy with the system that you're in right now, contact them. You know The ability for them to roll your system into their system is very easy. Again, you guys know they've been sponsoring this program and I can't say uh, enough good things about them, but uh, make your own decision, right? Give it a shot on your own and see if it's right for you. Did you get the latest issue of PI Magazine? Make sure you visit PIMagazine.com if you don't subscribe. Check out Matt's columns on Podcasting 101 and PI Perspectives. Gain greater insight into people, assets, businesses, and their interrelationships with IDI's next generation investigative platform, IDI Core. Through a massive data repository, advanced data fusion technology, and more intuitive UI, IDI Core uncovers the relevance of disparate data points, providing actionable intelligence to support your investigations. Register for a free trial at IDIdata.com slash PI Perspectives or call 844-778-1740. Also, look for IDI at the Osmosis Virtual Conference on October 11th through October 13th at their virtual exhibit booth. IDI also presents a roundtable special with industry leaders Neil Cadell, Kelly Riddle, Mike Doris, and Jimmy Messis on October 8th, hosted by our very own Matt Spare. Have you signed up for the Investigator's Toolbox yet? What are you waiting for? Don't miss out. The legacy discount is ending very soon, and you'll miss a great opportunity. Are you serious about growing your business and increasing your knowledge base? Well, register today at investigators-toolbox.com. That's investigators-toolbox.com. Use code PIP201836 and save an extra 15 bucks. What do you do when you get calls for bug sweeps? Did you know usabugsweeps.com, the number one TSCM provider in the country, pays you a 20% commission for converted sales leads? Stop turning money away. USABugSweeps.com uses top-rated technology, and they cover all of the United States. So save time and make money today. Contact USABugSweeps.com and mention PIP20. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is your host, Matt Spare. Today, we have Richard Harris Eisen from Nicoletti and Harris. Uh, Rich, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being back here. So the in- investigator and the process server, right? Uh, holding hands and doing business together. Uh, I think yeah. I, f- I first met you probably about 13 or 14 years ago, right? So somewhere around there? Yes, yes. Was a, uh, we, we met at, uh, in a diner. I think, uh, in Queens. I remember that, right. And just the gist of that relationship or that meeting was we had mutual friends and they said, hey, you guys should do business together. Um, exactly. You can help one another out. And I was looking to get out of doing process service. For, for me as an investigator, I looked at it and said, my time is more valuable uh, from what I can charge to do process serving. I make more money doing investigations. Yes. And, um, you know, I was looking at that point, I think I was doing maybe about fifteen or $20,000 a year in process serving. So it wasn't really the main 
you know, no, breadwinner for me or, or the, the, the main market for me. So I said, okay, I got to get out of this. <laughs> so I got to find somebody to do it. Um, well, there's a lot of synergy. Yeah. We're, we're, we're dealing with the same revenue stream. Right. We'll provide, we're not really competing against each other. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Investigator, yep. uh, and you're no longer a process server. Right. Uh, but we both in, in servicing our clients, we both want to provide the services under what's somewhat uh, our umbrella. And, uh, the, the investigative services are somewhat asked for, by my clients whether we can provide them. And I, you know, of course, refer them to you uh, as a licensed private investigator. And I'm, of course, still ma- I'm making my clients happy. I'm very yeah. confident in the services you provide. Right. So it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's, it's great. And, you know, the other thing to remember is you're only as good as the people that work for you as well, right? So the, the actual right. people that you have on staff are excellent Everybody. I mean, you know, like every employee there, like they know what they're doing and I have full confidence that it's going to get done I, properly. I yeah, no, it's, it's been a great experience. I've actually heard the same thing from my clients. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of your company. No, I, I, I appreciate that too. Uh, and this is not a love fest here. Today. <laughs> so, you know, we're talking about, you know, how, how it works together and it's just understanding and respecting one another. Right. So, you know, there are a lot of times when I'll get a call from my client who maybe used a different process server company and they said, I sent my server out there and uh, like there was one recently where the, uh, the target, uh, the address they had was in Connecticut, right? So they, the process server went up to Connecticut and it was actually a college dorm, right? So the process server never told the attorney that it was a dorm. They just said they couldn't serve the person. Like the address right. you know, was, was not good. And um, so the attorney hired me and said, hey, we need you to do a background on this guy and, and find out exactly where he is. Now we had it's done the, the initial workup on that person probably six months earlier. And, uh, you know, the person had an, an address in New York. And to me, right. it's like, you got to take it one step dorm. further. Yeah. And well, the college dorm was in, in Connecticut, but the guy, the guy actually lived in New York. Right. Um, and they just didn't have the tools to take it that much further. So you have a lot of these process serving companies where you get what you pay for, right? So they charge a certain rate and it's, you know, everyone, they're always like, that's the the other thing I, I, it, it hurts me <laughs> when the process serving industry is like all the undercutting, you know, it's like, oh, well we can do it for $5 cheaper, you know, and the attorney going, oh, well I can save $5 here. Let me go with him and not realizing that, you know, someone's going to like pull up to the the house that the lights aren't on and they're going to be like, okay, it's eight fifty five. Nobody was home. Uh, I'm done. And you don't even knock on the door. Right. So, uh, you, you get what no, you pay is, for essentially. Absolutely. My clients won't even stand for that, right. uh, which is why we love working with you. My service go out to, to a location. Uh, they identify the property. If it's not a good address and it's clearly not a good, that good address, uh, they want us to take the next step. Right. You know, they want us to, you know, provide a better address. They want to be notified immediately. Uh, they want to know what we saw at that address. Sure. But they do want us to provide another address, which is why sometimes our relationship is so important because there are things that I could do, but there are certain things that I cannot do. Right. And, so that uh, that's the, the difference too. So a, a, a process serving company, yes, you're entitled to some sort of research database and all that, but you definitely are not entitled to the ones that I'm entitled to. So that's, no. that's where that the, the relationship is important. We do not get the meat and potatoes and yeah. our clients want the meat and potatoes. Sure. They want to know, and it makes us look good. Sure. So, yeah. And, and the, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, they really don't care how much it costs. They just want it done. Like it's got to be done yeah. properly. Right. You know, I mean, obviously you don't, you know, completely take advantage of them and charge $5,000 to serve process. No, right. No, no, Everything's got its fair industry, you know, standard. And then, exactly. you know, there's, there's people that, uh, you know, that, that race to the bottom. Uh, and you know, there, there are people that, you know, listen, that, that, that invest in their business and take pride in what they do. And, provide a service that, you know, that needs to, you know, get, you know, needs to, I guess, demand a certain amount of money. Yeah. But most of my clients understand that and they just listen, they want to move their cases. They don't want to get stuck in some dumb Travers hearing. Okay. It's the last thing they want to think about it. Right. It, it really is. Right. Okay. It is, 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 is the paper being served. So, you know, and, and, and then when we could provide information for them that makes their case move, Okay, which is where again you come in. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's priceless. It's really priceless to them. Yep. And I would say though that some of the follow up work I get, and when another way that a, an investigator can help a process serving company is, let's say the papers were served and they were served legitimately, you know, and the the defendant chooses never to put it an answer in. Right? They just ignore it. 
right? So yep. now you got to dig a little bit deeper, right? So uh, you need the investigator to do a little background on this person and maybe have a conversation with that person saying, hey, like, do you understand what a default judgment is? Do you understand like how your insurance company is going to disavow coverage because you didn't notify them in a timely manner? Like, you don't want that to happen. This is why you pay for your insurance. Just call your insurance company. Right. They'll deal with it, right? So being able to to have that conversation, you know, maybe that's somebody, you know, uh, who is a, an investigator as opposed to a process server who can do that digging and can have that reasonable conversation with somebody uh, about it. So that, that's a lot of things we do on my end where, you know, your company effectuated service and it was done properly. Yes, and um, the other side's just ignoring good. it. The address is good. The guy, the, the guy is there. Right. He has, he's just not submitting the paperwork to the insurance company. There's right. no question about it. Yeah, I, I get a lot of those. And it's like you got to go in and just have a conversation. Like, hey, don't be a right. knucklehead. Because when that judgment comes down, it will be against it's you. It's going to be worse, yeah. right? Yeah. And the insurance company, like in their language, basically says you have a certain amount of time to notify us that you've been served process. Otherwise, we're out. Good luck. Yeah, we're not going to we're not going to defend it for you. Um, you know, so that those are, uh, you know, conversations to have. But I, we, we do that a lot, actually. You know, just having that, tracking people down and just having that conversation. Um, I so, never realized that. That yeah. conversation of, listen, you've been served. You haven't responded or, 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 or uh, supplied your insurance company with the summons complaint. You need to, do, I didn't know that you, that you went out there a lot to do that. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, Hey, they're about to take a default judgment on you. You know, here's another copy of the papers that were served on you. Here's a copy of the affidavit of service that the server, you know, initially served you on, on right. it. You know, like, here's your signature on the, on the paper they served that you actually signed. Like you're going to lose buddy. Right. <laughs> Just call your insurance company. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we've we've done that, and that's that's one way that an investigator can can help a, a serving company. So having reliable tools, and I, and on my show, I'm always saying that right. It's better to know the guy or girl than be the guy or girl. I don't right. want to do process serving, but I got a really great process serving company. I know that's going to take care of it. Right? Those are the types of relationships that you want to have. Um, and that's what I and that's the same conversation I have when I speak with my clients. Okay, yeah. with respect to investigators. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, although I shouldn't say that we don't want to do that. It's just we we don't have that license. You don't want to deal with process. I, mean, I respect that. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a conversation. I got to be honest with Matt. Seven out of ten times when I'm pitching a client, okay, that that attorney says to me, "Do you guys do investigative work?" Right. Uh, I don't. I uh, when it comes to licensed investigative work, I don't do it. But I have a great investigator who handles you know mostly tort cases and you know then that's obviously the synergy between you and i yeah and that that opens the door for me you know let me have matt from satellite give you a call and then you reach out to me and right. say call you know xyz you know jones and smith law firm they're you know they're looking for somebody right so you're you're basically now a salesperson for me right and i'm a salesperson for you it's, and that's it's the, true. the way it works right there's no, there's no question about it yeah it's only going to benefit um Everybody, right. you know. But again, we have to. We have to, of course, stand by our service. Right. Know what we're doing. Right. Be professional. And uh, you know. Yeah, that obviously, that, you know, that helps. It, it, yeah. it goes on from there. It definitely helps, and you know, the rules and laws are always changing too. And that's the thing. As an investigator, you've got so much other work that you're doing, so many different types of things. When that when those process serving laws change, you may not get the memo. You may go out there and serve papers and think that you've effectuated service, and guess what? Laws change and you, and, you, and you haven't, you know, now you've opened yourself up to liability, right? Laws change, compliance changes every, all the every, time, every year, all the time, all the time. We have, we have a compliance person. Okay. Uh, they, uh, they change all the time. Okay. We need, you need to be on top of that, you know, civil rules and procedure, the federal, the federal side, the state side, you know, it's, you know, the, the, the rules for service are changing all the time. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, you know, it, Effectuating process on somebody is such an important part of the litigation process. If it's not done properly, it's basically an out for it's, for the defendant party. It's the first, yeah, it's the first out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Attorneys, listen, they don't want to know from it, but it's the it's the first part of the litigation. It's the it's the point of sticking to it's the stickiness. It's the jurisdiction. Yeah, uh, and if it's not done right. It's the first out, and they do play games. Oh yeah, def- especially malpractice cases. Yep. Okay, they because the, the statute of limitations is shorter. Okay, they will not. You know, they'll get served and not answer, not respond. 
Uh, the doctor uh, doesn't work at the hospital, you know. <laughs> yeah, he no, works he, here, but he's not officially on staff, so right. we're not accepting for him, you know. Um, right. and, I, and, and that's what they do. In the med, yeah. med, med mal cases, the first thing they try to do, okay, is uh, contest the service. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a little si- sidebar real quickly on this. And it just reminded me of a story when I actually used to serve process, right? So there was a doctor in Staten Island who was world-renowned for doing um, – uh, cancer research, uh, and he, he came up with this idea of doing radio waves to, to break up cancer cells, you know, and it was like the who's who doctor, right? This guy treated George Harrison, and uh, he got in a little bit of trouble because George was on his deathbed, and he's like, can you sign this guitar, please? Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he wasn't the, the, the coolest guy, but that, that guy had treated uh, another patient who was sick, and and Basically, the claim, the cause of action on this was he didn't give this person the opportunity to have conventional surgery because he was try- still doing research for this new cutting edge procedure that he wanted to try. So allegedly, he pointed this person in the direction of doing this procedure that didn't work, right? So there was now a lawsuit that was going on. And this guy was dodging me like you would not believe, right? And I remember I finally caught up with him in Staten Island University Hospital. And I said, hey, I know you live at so-and-so. I know you have a T bird. I know all this other stuff. I can get you at home, or you can just take these papers from me. Like it's it's gonna happen. And he's like, "All right, just give me the papers." So, right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't want to harass you, dude. Like, like I'm gonna get you. It's it's gonna happen, right? Um. So yeah, those yeah. were the the, the wild west days. Those those wild goose chases yeah. usually end like that. <laughs> yeah. Just give it to me. I talked about it on another podcast also too when I had to serve a um a celebrity uh, a rapper. You know, and this guy was like, I knew I was never going to get him because he was either in in his estate out on Long Island or he was at at the uh, radio station, you know, and it was like going from one car to, you know, in and out of the car and going and and he was doing. So I knew I couldn't get him personally. So I found out who his his lawyer was. And I told I called the lawyer and said, listen, I'm going to go to the, you know, I know people in the press and I'm going to go to the press and, and basically let them know what's going on, or you can uh, avoid the embarrassment for your client and just accept service for these papers. And he's like, all right, come down and, and I'll take the papers. So, Oh really? Uh, yeah. Just being, being creative. And, on it, that. and it was good service. It was good service. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, good yeah, it was no, uh, no problem. So um, yeah, it was, it was uh, very interesting, but that's, you know, back in the day when I was doing that kind of stuff and, and just, you know, understanding that uh, when they changed the laws in New York was really when I made the decision because now they were requiring yeah. me to carry extra insurances. I was required to take exams and, you know, and like if you were serving within the five boroughs, you had to have this extra license. And if you were outside the five oh, boroughs, yeah. you didn't. And I was like, for, you know, fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year in revenue, like this is nonsense. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, no, and, and that, and that change really changed the, the entire industry. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it created, uh, created an avenue for people that are, you know, had had already had the technology, already had the infrastructure, because in order for you to really stay in the business, uh, you had to spend a little money. You had to have a compliance department. Right. You had to more or less have more of a, a, a managerial team. And then process every business back then was, you know, obviously antiquated, and and people didn't have that type of infrastructure. Right. And guys like you. The investigator didn't want to deal with it anymore. Right. So what we did, what we did when that happened, I think that we did. It was somewhat of a silver lining, because we were able to capitalize on firms that were losing their process service because they didn't even want to be in business anymore. Uh, and then, of course, you know, investigators, you know, mainly you, uh, who was just, you know, it, it didn't make sense. It was just, you know, it was de minimis. There wasn't enough revenue, yeah. and you know. And, but you know, but you didn't want to give the business away, and you don't want you. You still wanted to provide a service to your client and make them happy. Well, that's the thing. So I would go on sales meetings, and it's like, yes, I'm here to do all your investigative work. It's like, oh, great, but uh, I need someone to do my pretrial work. So who's serving? You know, like you serving subpoenas? Who's serving the subpoenas? Right. right? And I'm like, so, well, I'm not going to say no. So <laughs> no, no, you can't. It's it, it's honestly, it, it's one of those things that it, it, I I don't want to use the word necessary evil. Uh, but you, you're still going to have to, you know, when you break down that file, you're still going to have to have somebody serve the process. It's, when I can't, when I can't find an address, I'm still going to have to have somebody find that address. Right. So th- that's the synergy. Yeah. No, and it's, it's real and it, it works. We've, we've made it work for many years and it's, uh, right. it's been positive. I think one of the other game changers you had talked about the, um, the API and I, I'm always preaching on my end to investigators for a case management system. But one of the things I really enjoy doing business with you guys is I get those notifications. 
It can, right. you know, when when the, the process has been served, I know when it's been served, and I know well, like the affidavit's coming. I know the the invoice from you is coming, so I can bill it accordingly on my end and and keep it timely because I want to make sure you get paid too, right? So yeah, um, you know, keeping everybody on the same page and making sure the bills are done properly and and getting it's just it's been a real pleasure. Um, you know, well, really, I appreciate that. You know, attacking it that and, way, and, and and vice versa. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that's another thing. You know, with our business, I, our business. You know, the, pro, the 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 actual process, the service, the, the point of effectuating the service, it's it's critical. But what's also really critical is the management of the process. Right. It's 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 the record storage. It's the delivering the the affidavits electronic electronically to the to, to the client it's delivering the invoice to the accounting department sure you know it's just, it's just become a much more streamlined business yeah. than it ever was yeah yeah you gotta so. gotta have a good office manager otherwise you're going down with the ship <laughs> no, you, there's no question about that <laughs> uh, i mean we have a department for we have a department for everything yeah you know, so, no, but, but a, you need to it's yeah. no it's, it's good stuff yeah it's um yeah. definitely something to uh to consider so Definitely folks that that are out there, you know, if if you feel like it's time for you to at least explore the idea of uh, having a different company handle your, your process, I would say really, really look into it because it can be a big game changer for you. You can focus more on the things that you want to do and, uh, you know, you're still servicing your client, which is, you know, at the end of the day, one of the most important things to do. Just understanding that maybe it's time not to sit in the car waiting for somebody to come home to, to, to serve papers to them. You know, maybe no, it's time, no. time to, to sometimes people turn it have over. better things to do than that, but yeah. that's what we do and we're happy to do it. Yeah. And, and you're good uh, at it. Yeah. You know, and we're professionals and, uh, that's how, it's how we make a living. And, uh, we understand that, uh, that, you know, not everybody wants to do it, yeah. uh, with respect to investigators. And, uh, you know, we, we love the opportunity to, uh, to of course speak to you and uh, see what we can do for your firm. Yeah, yeah, and so so the guy that that uh, you you got a, like a superstar that works there. That guy, how long has that dude been with you? How long has he been uh, serving for you? So that that he's been with us. So I've been in business for 20, 25 years, twenty six years, and I've known him for twenty four years, maybe twenty five years. Yeah, uh, he used to uh, work for a competitor of mine. Right. We were in the same building. And I just envied this competitor because I, I knew that he had a superstar that, that in this guy. And uh, I would see him in the mornings in the office. He would come into the building. He would be like, I just served this guy personal here. And uh, oh, a federal case, I served this guy personal here. He was so driven right. and um, passionate about it. And and, and it's, it's, it's a diamond and a rough in this industry. And oh, sure. this is years ago. Uh, and I, I, I saw him about. Seven years later, I moved offices to a different place. I actually saw him at a New York City uh, a DCA testing facility. And, uh, you know, history, you know, that was it. Uh, I said, definitely call me. I don't think he wasn't working for that gentleman anymore. Yeah. Uh, he called me and he, I think he's been with us for probably 17, 18 years. That's amazing. Yeah. And he's, he's yeah. great. You know, there are certain times where, I'll get papers and I'll, I'll call you off and I'll say like, make sure this guy does his work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <'cause> Listen, <laughs> it's very hard to find somebody that, you know, that's been doing this for so long that understands the business. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and he's very good for, for, uh, technical services. Right. You know, the hard, the hard to serve, you know, the six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. He's, waiting, he's definitely waiting, waiting, waiting it. And that's how you really get people. Yeah. You don't get, you know, you don't get somebody at their house at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. No, <laughs> definitely. Not. Well, during COVID, maybe, maybe you would, but no. maybe during COVID, no. good luck getting them to open the door. Right, uh, right, exactly. But, so he he knows the time and the day. Yeah, no, he's he's good stuff. So some of the other things that you do is not just process serving too. Like you have a whole uh, yes. record retrieval business too. So tell me about that real quick. Well, we have a full record retrieval. If if you know if an attorney needs somebody to go to court. Uh, requisition a file, make photocopy uh, mm -hmm. of that file. We file papers. Again, we retrieve documents. Uh, we we have a, we're, we're certified electronic filing uh, company with the New York State Court System, so we do all electronic filings uh, for clients. Uh, you know, we you know we will really do anything for our clients that make their life easy. Right. We're a process serving company. That's what we do. We're a court filing business. But if an attorney needs a file brought to his home. Uh, if, uh, 
you know, documents need to be picked up in a medical office and, and, and brought to court or brought to the, their client's office. You know, we have notary services. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's somewhat an unlimited suite of services. So one of the other things, it's funny you said doctor's offices and picking up files. One of the things that we've been doing a lot recently is uh, a lot of these facilities have gone out of business, right? So it's like, who's, who's the custodian of these medical records, right? That's so yeah. we've been tracking down, you know, who's got the records so we can make sure those subpoenas are sent to the right place. I've got a whole bunch of them now. It's really, uh, it's been interesting. Um, and this is all, this is all COVID. Uh, some of it is, some of it's, you know, they went out of business. So a while ago and, uh, right. you know, there's procedures to how, how they're supposed to, um, maintain those records. Even if they're no longer in business, they're, they're bound to, um, you know, be custodians of those records or at least have somebody that's, um, right. That's able to do that stuff. So, Hey Rich, this is, this has been really, really great. Again, I encourage any, uh, investigator out there that wants to get out of the game, uh, with the process serving, reach out to Rich, and uh, you know he's not just a New York Thanks, guy. They, they cover they cover everything, you know, all over the place, uh, and, and the baby around and the stuff. corner and around the world. There you go. All right, look at you, Mister Big Time. Anywhere. So, how do folks get a hold of you? Of course, you know you can call our office at two one two two six seven six four four eight. You can email me. My uh, email address is r harris at n i c h a r dot com. My cell number nine one seven four five three three nine eight three if anybody has any process that they want to send those go to services at nickhar.com yeah we're, and we'll put all that stuff in the show notes so folks have it so uh, hey rich i know we had talked for a while about to getting you on to do this so i appreciate uh, you taking the time i'm glad we we're able to finally uh, bang this one out and uh, catch up and uh, and talk about this stuff so uh, again i'm a big believer in you know, knowing when it's time to send the, the work uh, to different places. And this is one of my resources, folks, that I'm sharing with you that, uh, you know, I've had nothing but great experiences with. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Rich, for, uh, for being a part really of the show here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll catch you guys next week, next Monday, on the next episode. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks to Rich for coming on to talk about his business. If you think it's time to start sending process service work to a process serving company, give him a ring and tell him you heard him on the show. We also want to thank Crosstracks IDI and USABugSweeps.com for sponsoring the show. Have you checked out InvestigatorsToolbox.com yet? Remember, it only takes 41 cents a day to unlock the future of investigations. Make an investment in your business and yourself today. The 25% legacy discount won't last long. Use code PIP201836 to save even more. And catch Matt teaching about InvestigatorsToolbox.com at the Cybercraft Summit on October 1st and 2nd. You can register for free at CybercraftSummit.com. Got a question or comment about the show? Email Matt at MatthewS at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We want your feedback so we can bring you the best shows possible. And our next show is a quick hit segment to wrap up our coverage of the Osmosis Conference this year. So check it out this Thursday. And we'll be back on next Monday with a new show. Make sure you tune in. Stay safe out there, everyone. 